Hey folks, Dr. J here at Family First Chiropractic with your weekly health video. Uh, this is Move Well and Often Part 2. So last uh, week in our video, Move Well and Often Part 1, we went over how and why consistent chiropractic care fits into the wellness lifestyle. Now actually, it's my belief that chiropractic care forms the foundation of the wellness lifestyle because it's going to allow your body to utilize all of the other positive choices that you and your family are about to implement their fullest potential. So wherever you are right now, my most important recommendation for you is to find a good chiropractor that you connect with and get your family under care, get your spines aligned and moving well, and then maintain that so that you have the most optimal nervous system function possible. And if you're in the Austin area, come look us up. We're down on Ben White right next to St. David's. Now, briefly at the end of the part one video, I also mentioned that sitting was so detrimental for your health. So I just want to reiterate right now, if you have a job where you sit at a desk all day in an office, then please break it up. Just set an alarm on your phone for every 30 minutes and then get up, find something to do. Go to the bathroom, go to the printer, go talk to your coworker. Uh, get a drink of water. You probably are dehydrated anyway, so go do that. Or you can even stretch. Do some yoga poses or a few sun salutations, or you could do some, some body weight exercises right there in your cubicle, like push ups or body weight squats or planks. The point is get up. And if the alarm option doesn't work for you, then simply stand up every time you make or take a phone call. So the phone rings, I get up. I have to dial a number, I get up. And then I sit right back down when I'm done with that. This will certainly get you up, uh, up enough during the day. There are also the option now to pr purchase convertible desk toppers so you don't have to change your physical desk, but it allows you to go up or go down so you can sit and stand at various times throughout the day. I love the products at Veridesk, V-A-R-I-D-E-S-K, but be sure you also get the monitor arm adapter that goes with your uh, desk topper so that you get your monitor up high enough so that your head is up and you're not standing in forward flexed head posture all day long. Let's talk exercise now. Folks, this is mandatory and it should be daily. Try to think of your uh, week as a seven day opportunity for exercise. That means that we need seven out of seven opportunities completed each week of something to do. On a physiologic level, you just cannot afford to have a day where you do nothing physical. Even on rest days, you still need to be active. So the trick is walking. I'm a huge fan of walking, and I actually believe that it is the defining movement pattern of the human. So, if you're just now getting started with exercise, you don't know where to begin, or if you don't have time to get to the gym today, or if it's Sunday and you've been watching football all day and you need to do something, then just go for a walk. Grab the husband and the wife, grab the kids, get the neighbors, get outside 45 to 60 minutes and walk. Not only are you spending some good quality time with your fans, friends and family, you're getting your exercise in for the day, and you're getting outside. There's literally no excuse not to exercise because walking always an option. Walking isn't everything, however. Now, our, our bodies are designed to have physical stresses placed upon them because genetically, we're designed to grow stronger because of these stresses. So what am I talking about? In a word here, resistance. Now, this can come in many different forms, but I do recommend weightlifting for everyone at least two to three days a week. You don't have to lift crazy heavy, but load up your muscles and your bones and your joints and move some iron around. It's good for you. The body responds positively to it. It's designed to. Now, I like lifting total body in circuits with low weight and high reps. What you do is pick 10 exercises that are going to work all of your major muscle groups and then some of the smaller minor muscle groups. You're going to blast through each exercise with 12 to 15 reps. You're going to rest for two minutes and then you're going to repeat that for a total of four to five sets and you're done. You should be out of the gym in 45 minutes. And guess what? Body weight, functional movements are another way to get some great resistance training into your week. There are literally days worth of good movements out there to choose from. You can mix and match those and put some into your weight sets as well at the gym. Push-ups, pull-ups, hanging rows, planks, 
toes to bar, body weight squats, jump rope, any jumping movement, bear crawls, lunges, all of those are a great place to start. And if you can work with someone that can teach you how to use the TRX bands, then this opens up an entire new world of body weight exercises for you. Strength isn't everything, however. We also have to keep our range of motion at its optimal, and so stretching and soft tissue mobilization are got to be important parts of your routine. Now, I love the foam roller, but I feel it's got some limitations. You do not need to spend 30 minutes of your hour at the gym foam rolling. You should get in there and get a good full body roll in about 5 to 10 minutes tops. And this doesn't play, take the place of a good massage by a licensed massage therapist. but Foam rolling will help you keep the effects of those massages in between sessions. So I recommend get yourself a good LMT and get at least 60 minutes each month. And we still haven't even talked about yoga. Yoga is my jam. And if I was forced to choose a single method of physical activity, it, it would be yoga. It's a fantastic body weight resistance. It's a wonderful stretch to your entire body. It's unparalleled breathing work. And when done correctly, it can give you quite a good cardio workout. Now, I also really love the de-stressing and the meditative quality of a yoga practice because those things offer a whole host of physiologic benefits on their own. So go find yourself a studio wherever you are. And if you can't find a studio, if you're just not interested in getting out and going to a studio, then get into a website. It's called www.udaya.com, U-D-A-Y-A.com. I'll put a link in at the end here, but uh, they've got a great monthly streaming session. And you can check out my buddy Rudy Mattia, one of the best yoga teachers in the country. I'm also a believer in activity or sport as exercise. So folks, go outside, swim, go to the park and play frisbee with your family, throw the football around, ride your bikes, play some golf or frisbee golf or hacky sack, fly a kite, canoe, kayak, go fishing or go hike through whatever parks and green belts your particular city has to offer. All of these things count. They get you up, they get you outside, they get you moving, they get stresses, good quality physical stresses put upon your body. And if you work them into your week, they count. So to recap, we are designed to move and to move all day long. At work, you've got to find a way to break up your sitting to no longer than 30 minutes. And then you need to organize your week around a variety of 45 to 60 minute bouts of exercise. Choose from weightlifting, interval training, yoga, walking, or just getting out there and playing with your friends and your family. When you really look at all the options you have, I think it's going to be hard to fit all of that into your week. I mean, let's say two sessions of weights, two yoga classes, a walk, a day of interval training, and a day at the park with a family, and you're there. Folks, this is Dr. J at Family First Chiropractic. I'll see you at the park. Blessings. Don't.